สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to the Nation Daily with Tulip. This is for December 19, 2023. A research and development company is predicting four factors that could negatively impact Thailand real estate market in 2024: interest rates, labor costs, expenses, and banking. The National Statistical Office of Thailand is urging the government to further promote basic rights, social security, and labor protection for workers in the informal sector. The WHO recommends Thailand should strengthen its law enforcement and monitoring system for vaping or electronic cigarettes to avoid a severe mass tragic addiction in the future. The Royal Thai Consulate General in New York has received an official directive to collaborate with Metropolitan Museum of Art in repatriating two artifacts. And Tham Luang Cave in Chiang Rai Province will be open to a limited number of tourists who register in advance for a visit to chambers number two and number three. As year 2023 is coming to an end, this is the time of the year when you will hear a lot of uh, research, study, statistic, and recommendation for next year. And today we are going to begin the program. With something about real estate market in 2024, because a study center said that there will be four factors that negatively impact the real estate market in Thailand, being interest rates, the labor costs, expenses, and banking. LWS Wisdom and Solution, a real estate research and development company, talk about four risk factors: the interest rates tending to remain at a high level. The rates will have a direct impact on the financial costs of real estate developers and home buyers, and causing the cost of project development and housing purchases to increase. Next, minimum wage increase. If the new government's policy to increase wages to a minimum of 400 baht per day comes into effect, like they said. It would directly affect the operating costs of real estate operators and would be factor in causing a house price to increase. And then the energy prices. The price of construction materials tend to increase too when energy price increases. In turn, increasing construction costs and house prices. And as financial institutions apply stricter judgment in approving housing loans, it would directly affect market purchasing power. So in 2024, the Bank of Thailand would continue a strict monetary policy for considering loans from financial institutions due to the high household debt burden. While the proportion of non-performing housing loans remain high compared to other types of personal loans, this would have a direct impact on the purchasing power for housing in the market, especially housing with a price lower than 3 million baht per unit. So it seems like the real estate market have to do a lot of adjustment and a lot of preparation for what might happen next year. Next story, we will go to the latest statistic about the informal workers in Thailand. We have about 21 million people that are in informal workers, and a lot of them are actually 60 years old. The National Statistical Office of Thailand, or NSO, is urging the government to further promote basic rights, social security, and labor protection for workers in the informal sector. The latest statistic shows that more than half of Thailand's workforce, which is higher than 50%, of course, or some 21 million people, are informal workers. They are those who lack employee status as defined under the Labor Protection Act. Typically, they do not work at an employer's premises, nor do they have official employment contracts. They either work at home, self-employed, or temporary staffers. So NSO said that about half of the informal workers are between 40 to 59 years of age, and 5.1 million workers aged over 60, and 4.4 million of them are not protected under the labor laws. The NSO also reported that more than half of informal workers, which is about 10 million, are in agricultural sector, and the majority are of low educational status. The agency urged the government to increase efforts to ensure that informal workers receive basic rights, livable wages, and proper protection in a bid to improve the overall quality of life of all ties of working age. 
that will be another big challenge for the government because like we know that they already said that they are aiming to apply for to be a member of OECD and one other thing is the quality of life of people um, money that people make the income in average per head and a lot of many other factors so we just have to see how this government will formulate everything the next story we will go to the e-cigarette story because WHO just issued a statement urging governments around the world to be more stringent on e-cigarette and it said that it's not as safe as people think it is and it's actually have more potential harm than advertised. The WHO recommends Thailand to strengthen its law enforcement and monitoring system for vaping or electronic cigarettes to avoid severe mass tragic addiction in the future. It is urging governments around the world to take steps to prevent the use of e-cigarettes claiming that the product is more harmful than it claims to be. The WHO representative praised Thailand's decision to prohibit the use of e-cigarettes. However, since vaping is still widespread in the country, particularly among young people, he believes the country must do a better job of enforcing the law and regulations. Thailand has already banned e-cigarettes, so what is needed next is to enforce that ban. Make sure that indeed um, cigarettes, e-cigarettes are not being used in Thailand, are not being sold, are not being imported. So enforce it, that's one thing. And the other thing is, we know that through the internet and other ways, e-cigarettes can come into Thailand because we know that some people are using it. Quite a number of youth actually have started taking it. Now, the other thing that, that the government can do is monitor that. Monitor around where do the e-cigarettes come from, how can, how can we better understand who's using them, why, etc. So monitor the use, monitor the sales, so that also based on, on the real situation, then action can be taken and the ban can be reinforced. So yes, we have the law, uh, same as many, many other issues in Thailand. Seems like we have laws for everything. The big factor of that is how we enforce those laws that we have. Next story, we will go to something a little lighter because the Royal Thai Consulate General in New York has received an official directive to collaborate with Metropolitan Museum of Arts in repatriating two Thai artifacts. The museum initiated the move by writing to Thai Fine Arts Department, specifically addressing the repatriation of two bronze statues, the one that called Golden Boy, and another one is a kneeling female figure with arms raised above the head. The Foreign Ministry, the Fine Arts Department, and related agencies were part of a committee formed in 2017 dedicated to the repatriation of Thai artifacts. The committee has so far successfully overseen the return of several artifacts, including the lintel of Nong Hong Castle in Buriram, 13 wooden Buddha figures, and antiquities from the Ban Chiang archaeological site. So it will be very excited to receive these two back home in Thailand. The next story, we will go to Chiang Rai. Tham Luong is actually become famous just not many years ago when there were 12 kids and their coach actually trapped in the cave for many, many days and the whole world were being supportive and keep eyes on the story until they all rescued out of the cave. But now this place is opening for tourists to go in in chamber number two and chamber number three. Tham Luang Cave in Chiang Rai province will be open to a limited number of tourists who register in advance for a visit to chambers two and three. The cave is a part of Tham Luang Khun Nam Nang Non National Park that became famous in June 2018. Registrations for trips into the cave were opened on December 15 initially. The trip will be organized twice in the mornings and afternoon on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Three days a week, two times a day, so in each week you'll get six trips. Eligible tourists will join a two to four hour exploration along the approximately 700 meter deep route. They will encounter the stalactite rocks and holes that caused the rescue difficulties in 2018. 
The cave trip costs 950 baht per person for the Thai tourists and 1500 baht per person for the foreign tourists. Fees for equipment and accident insurance are not included. Tourists must register at least 15 days in advance. The National Park will consider upcoming weather conditions before informing applicants within 7 days. And of course, you shouldn't go in there during the rainy season because the water level is high, it can be flooded and whatnot, like we heard what happened to those kids five years ago. And that's a wrap for this edition of the Nation Daily. For more news, you can log on to our website, nationthailand.com, and you can follow our social media. We have X, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. สวัสดีค่ะ.